Hi, this is Swapnil Bharti and we are here at VM World Conference in Las Vegas and today we have with us Mimi Sphere who is also VP of IoT and everything to do with uh, Edge. Edge, right, <laughs> at VMware. So first of all, tell us about the, the Internet of Things or Edge Computing you know, story at VMware. Sure, sure. So we are so excited. We announced today on stage a new portfolio of solutions called VMware Edge uh, and it really is an all-encompassing uh, strategy for us to deliver what we're kind of doing is in our multi-cloud environment and the ability for our customers to leverage multiple clouds they now will be able to leverage infrastructure down at the edge as well as be able to manage monitor and secure all of their devices iot devices human driven devices down at the edge so we're pulling this all together because we realize that this is a significant part of digital transformation for our customers and it's really hard to do. And if we can make it easier for customers to be able to take a VMware kind of holistic approach to edge computing and IoT and let them focus on what's most important, which are the analytics and the apps and how you apply the data that you're collecting at the edge, then we think this could drastically simplify how IoT gets rolled out. It could you know, really accelerate innovation and adoption. And they can, you know, customers can do it on their consistent infrastructure, consistent operations, but with the ability to choose the right operating systems, the right application services, the right hardware, or whatever else they think is important, but all encompassing around the edge. So, uh, so this solution will run on basically on the server side, not at the edge device side, right? The first part is the device edge. And okay. what we consider that we call it the device edge, and it is gateways and below. So gateways, things, sensors. We have Pulse IoT Center. We announced Pulse IoT Center 2.0, which is as a service, and it will manage, monitor, and secure up to half a billion devices at the device edge. The challenge at the device edge is there are so many heterogeneous types of devices. You have cameras, you have gateways, you have, you know, occupancy sensors, you've got smart meters, you've got, you know, all sorts of different devices. And even within one industry, there's a tremendous amount of devices. Each one of those, as I mentioned, have different operating systems, different network protocols, different hardware. And they all today have very siloed solutions that IT organizations are not really familiar or don't really know what's going on, what's connected, and don't have enough visibility over the security of what is really compute down at the edges. And that's how VMware uh, you know, pictures this. So that's the device edge and that's Pulse IoT Center 2.0. At the device edge, we also have been forever, we have Workspace ONE. You know, that's really focused on people devices, but you, if you think about it with IoT, there are more and more people devices. There are wearables, there are helmets, you know, there are um, you know, whiteboards, all these different devices, and you have to have the applications ready and available for the workforce, no matter what device they're using. And so that will continue to help you know, accelerate IoT uh, when it comes to the workforce and how they use it, whereas Pulse is more focused on the device edge and things. Then you've got the compute edge. Mm -hmm. The compute edge is where the processing happens. As you need real-time analytics in a factory, on an oil rig, or for many other reasons like latency, cost of storage, you know, there's a lot of reasons why you might want compute now, not just in the cloud, but at the edge. Right. This is more of you know, what some people term as the fog, but it's really almost a micro data center or a server class system at the edge that can do that. That is what we announced around Project Dimension. Mm -hmm. Project Dimension takes VMC, which is a, you know, really as a service, all-encompassing infrastructure service and management service for AWS, and we are extending that to data centers and to the edge. And when it comes to the edge, we really see four different environments that we think are important. We see the branch, we see the industrial, like factories and plants, we see, um, the ruggedized remote, like oil rigs and smart grids and even smart cities. And then we see the transportation edge, which is inside vehicles or you know, trains or ships. Each one of these require 
something very specific to meet the needs of that environment at the edge and the use cases that make sense for that environment at the edge. So that's what we'll be focused on with Project Dimension at the edge. Right. Because you mentioned latency, for example, Amazon started Amazon Go store where you walk in there and most of those retail stores are coming, you know, there's no, so they're like many data center in themselves, you know, they don't have the time to send the data to the main cloud. That's correct. So, That's so, right. so when you look at the IoT use cases, um, what are the challenges you're seeing in the market when you see these new use cases are emerging and that you're trying to solve? So what I see is that IoT is hard. You know, you have to pick your sensors, your gateways. You have to know what you're trying, information you're trying to get. You have to get the data out. You have to send it where it needs to go. You have to integrate it with your systems. You have to integrate it with other data. And it's hard. And so the market is going a little slowly, but there is absolutely no doubt that industries are you know, dedicated to making it work. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason they are is because Industries are on so much, they're under so much pressure to innovate. I mean, if you look at the energy industry and two thirds of the energy is consumed in cities where you could have such a you know, more efficient way of doing distributed energy. Or if you think of agriculture and it's estimated that there needs to be 70% more food in the future, but there's only 5% more land to build it on. What do you do? You need indoor farming, uh, which enables 95% less water uh, and uh, something like 350 times more productivity of food. You know, so these are some examples of industries must innovate. You know, we see it in the autonomous vehicles and connected car. How do you compete there? And every industry has their story. So that's the motivator, but it's hard. And so that's why you see so many big companies like VMware and AWS and Microsoft coming together to solve it together and really you know, putting apart the fact that there is some competition there, but it requires us to work together to help our customers succeed in this area. And 5G comes into that, telcos as well. You mentioned Microsoft, they came out with the Sphere OS, which was designed for IoT and with mm -hmm. the So I would like, Sphere is also <laughs> the VMware product. Is that a coincidence? Yeah. I don't so, think so, no. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, which is designed, you know, they're baking in security at the hardware level itself. So are you working with partners like Microsoft uh, or, you know, what is your, you know, go to, you know, to market plan, you know, that you're really working with yourself, selling the solution, or you're working with partners? Okay, so let me say a couple things here. So what we're doing with Microsoft today is we are partnering with them with Pulse IoT Center. So Pulse IoT Center manages, monitors, and secures the device edge. What IoT Hub does from Azure is it is a container that goes on the gateways that collects data and then sends it back to the Azure cloud to do analytics. But without Pulse IoT Center, it's very difficult to get that container to scale out to thousands or who knows millions of gateways. So we are partnering together to really um, ensure that customers can at scale leverage Azure IoT. So that's what we're doing. When it comes to Sphere, we're not working together yet, mm -hmm. but we hope to. It's a very closed strategy that they have today. Mm -hmm. And we hope that changes in the future. But what we have announced today and I forgot to mention this at the device edge, and it's probably one of the most important things that you heard today, uh, but I, I, I'll just re-articulate it. We announced the hypervisor at the device edge. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? As things are becoming more software defined, cars, robots, you know, big machinery, automation, it is the hypervisor type of technology is going to be critical in that type of environment for consolidation, for isolation, separating out those mission critical applications, uh, and, and security is probably even the most important. And so what we announced today is VMware going somewhere they have never gone before with the hypervisor, and that is helping machine companies, automotive manufacturers, software define things. That is so exciting, and we are the perfect company to do that. And so, it's just the beginning of our journey, mm -hmm. and we just announced the project and you know the preview of the technology. And most of our customers aren't quite ready for it. We're just building design partners around that. But it is a very exciting part. We help to dominate the market when we you know provide a virtualization at the server level, and we hope to dominate the market in that area as well. What is interesting with VMware is if you look at your family, it's a large family of Dell, 
you know, yeah. and then you have Pivotal, which is also involved with Cloud Foundry. Mm -hmm. So, and when you talk about Dell, uh, there was, you know, Ajax uh, Foundry, uh, which came out of Dell, you know, they donated yes, the project. absolutely. And which uh, covers IoT. So, yep. uh, do you work with them also? Yeah, let's talk about Dell a little bit, because mm -hmm. they're such a big part of the equation. Um, so, let me say a couple things about Dell. First of all, we have combined organizations. Mm -hmm. So my organization and the Dell IoT organization, we are all one organization under one leadership. And we are doing things independently when it makes sense because VMware will always be a heterogeneous company that's a Switzerland that supports multiple hardware, et cetera. But this gives us the opportunity to build end-to-end -end solutions with our, for our customers in mm -hmm. very specific areas. And we did announce today also an end-to-end -end surveillance solution as the first of one of those solutions. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited. It leverages Pulse IoT Center managing all the cameras as part of the surveillance solution. So we have partnerships with Access Communications, uh, one of the leading enterprise surveillance companies. And Pulse runs on the camera to ensure the camera's running, ensure it's not hacked, ensure that nothing, nothing's covering it ensuring that it's on, <laughs> that it's working. Uh, and so that's what Pulse will do. And then our hyper-converged technology is going to be running in that uh, compute box that can be run in a data center or at the edge. So that is an example of a solution that meets a very specific need. It's Dell Technologies coming together. It has edge access part of it, which is a very important part of our entire strategy. Uh, and it has our hyperconvergent, as Pulse, and as the gateways, et cetera. So, and of course, the hardware from Dell. So that's one example. Um, we will continue to innovate under use cases and examples that we think are the right ones for our customers. And we will also innovate independently to make sure we have the best hardware, the best software, you know, so that as we build these solutions, we're doing the right things for our customers. I hope that answered your question. It, it does, okay. it does. Uh, how much of this work is open source? So that's interesting you say that. So we are leveraging a lot of open source. So Pulse 2.0 uh, has a lot of open source inside. So we have leveraged, uh, I don't think I can say yet, I don't know that we've announced specifically, so I'm going to hold that off. But we have many open source different projects that are part of Pulse 2.0. Uh, EdgeX is a very important part of our entire strategy. We fundamentally believe the more customers can choose and standardize, the easier it will be for us to all innovate and adopt IoT. Uh, so in many ways, we're going to do open source. Some of the things we haven't even decided yet, but right. we say, should we open source this? Who knows, maybe the hypervisor, who knows? So we absolutely take the open source community developers uh, very seriously. We, um, for example, the other thing I forgot to mention is we're doing projects like running Greengrass on vSphere and running some of those similar app services on vSphere to make sure that you can leverage the best of open source technology with a consistent infrastructure that allows you to innovate faster. So open source is a critical part of our strategy. You will see it ongoing and a part of everything we do. Awesome. So. Uh, before we wrap up this intro, this is the question that I have started asking everybody and I'll be asking you as well. Okay. When you're not talking about technology, when you're not doing all those IoT things, and then you mentioned that you know, we are running out of resources, I hope Thanos doesn't hear that, because <laughs> he is, I just watched you know, Infinity Wars two days ago. Oh gosh. So um, what do you do in your free time? Do you watch movies or what do you do? Well, I do lots of things. I work out because I have to to stay, you know, calm under this insane, yeah. you know, startup-y environment that we're in. Um, I do, I love to travel, love to travel all over the world. So Italy is one of my favorites, but I also, you know, love, you know, I love to see new places all the time. As part of your work or your like personal? Oh, this is personal. Did you want to know work? No, when you travel, you travel as part of work? Well, or you... I travel way too much for work, but <laughs> I try to do great travel for personal. Mm -hmm. I love to ski. I love to drink wine. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> that's me. Yeah, we, we live in, in Alps. Shop. We live in Garmisch, uh, Germany. Okay. Maybe you have been there and my wife loves skiing. I don't like, so I was like, that's a boring place for old people. There is nothing for me to do there. Oh, skiing is a blast yeah. though. You got to try it. I, it's such yeah, a thrill. I, I only tried sledging where you slid on a sledge. They have a bobsled in Germany where you sit on that it. That seems and scarier to me than skiing. But. Yeah, it is because you have, with the skiing, you have a control because you're still right. a bit sledge. You just slide down. So. Right. 
Yeah, so it's just, yeah, it's fun yeah. To, to... And you know what, most importantly, I try to do something that is giving back to the world. Right. So I'm on the board of the Anti-Defamation League, which is about civil rights, mm -hmm. and I am really involved in with people with special needs because I want to make sure that people with disabilities have, and this is where I think innovation is so exciting, is to give them a more high quality of life in the future with autonomous vehicles and you know things like that. So those are two of my passions on the side as so, well. So what, what, are, what are you doing with, uh, with the people with disabilities? Are you involved in any other projects specifically? Or? Yeah, so I'm, well, I'm involved in a lot of different things. I have a daughter with special needs, so it, it just naturally gets you involved. But I'm involved with some of the regulatory um, things that are happening in the federal government. I'm involved with, um, uh, there's a program called Best Buddies, which you know provides friends or buddies, they pair people with special needs to you know people typically developing in high schools. And then it goes through colleges and it gives them activities to do and to feel part of the community. So I'm part of that. Uh, there's a you know there's there's a lot of different ways that I'm getting involved, but it's 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 kind of just part of my everyday life. So I almost forget, but it's important to mention because technology is going to have such an impact. And I think people just you know everyone has their mission that they want to support, and that's one of them that I you know continue to support. It's awesome to learn that, and Thank thanks you. for taking your time yeah, out so today. Yeah, so nice to meet you. It was a pleasure.